Uh, but yeah, so I'm really excited to introduce Mr. Jeff tonight's uh, speaker. Um, you know, and I, and I know a little bit about Jeff. I've seen uh, a lot of like his YouTube videos. I thought it was pretty cool. He did one about the stock market. Some really good information in there. Um, you know, so I know he, you know, he's great content on, on the YouTube. So, so, so props to you, man. I, yeah, love the page. Um, so I guess what we're going to do like a, like a Q and a, uh, right, Peter, for the, for this one tonight. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's All try right. Like so let's rock and roll. So basically I think what a lot of people want to know, cause, and the, the point of this guys is it's not about, I've said it time and time again, it's not like a broken record. It's not about me. It's not about Peter. Um, we're just facilitating this platform. We want to give all you guys a voice. So again, you know, the, to get out of obscurity, you got to kind of get out of your comfort zone and do things like this. Personally, I could tell you for me, this has been great practice. Uh, by nature, I'm kind of like a shy guy. Um, I've done training and, and things of this nature, or more training things b uh, before, but it's kind of going over like boring stuff, policy and procedure, reading our PowerPoints. This is kind of, it's good practice. So if you guys ever want to get on different stages, a bigger stage, a live stage, I think this is fantastic practice uh, for all of you. Uh, so again, I invite you guys to get out of obscurity. If you guys want to do a Zoom call with us, that's where we're kind of like, we're not trying to be mean or be the police or whatever, but that's where we're kind of like, hey, you know, when you guys do your Zoom calls, when we do our Zoom calls, uh, like we do ours every Sunday at 8 p.m. for those of you joining us for the first time. Um, and we kind of want to have that time there, you know, just for not us, but for the group as a whole, so that all you guys have a bigger audience to kind of speak to, to show uh, something to, provide valuable information, you know, um, you know, basically, and, and, and get your name out there, you know, like tie everything into to what you do, your business, and, you know, kind of give everybody that opportunity and that platform, that stage to be able to, you know, kind of do their thing and, and uh, you know, get out of security, I guess you could say so. Anyway, so just kind of wanted to touch up on that, because, um, you know, I know there's been um, a lot of activity in the chat there, and thank you guys again for uh, your time being out here today at 8 p.m. On a, on a Sunday night. We could be on the Netflix and doing other things, so I appreciate all you guys, so. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's, um, you know, let, let's start off with the, with the Q&A. So, uh, Jeff, I do have a couple questions here. So, I know, so yeah, I saw your YouTube. Awesome stuff. Great editing. I, lo I love the, the page, and, you know, like, like I was mentioning. So, just to kind of, like, what do you do exactly? Like, I know you do, one of the things that you do is coaching. Like, what, what are the different things that you're involved with right now? Yeah, so pretty much uh, with any success, and thank you, Tony. And I want to say hi to everybody because I know it's Tony, Peter, David, Susie. I know Susie, Sebastian. Enrique, oh, there's Eden. Crazy Jer, oh, he's awesome. Troy, uh, he's like one of the veterans of the WhatsApp group. We got Eugenia, Angelo, Tanya, Barbara. Wow, there's actually a lot more in here. And of course, Tony. Um, so yeah, basically really where it's been to. And with anything, I kind of pivoted down to coaching. So I've always done coaching for the longest time, always trying to help people out, make more money. I used to say people surround around me made more money. Um, but and then people would always be like, well, Joey, Jeff, thanks. Because of you and everything, it was because of Grant Cardone and the knowledge we have in it, I'd be able to do it. So kind of niched down and felt like where we're at at the time, 6.6 .6 million people out of jobs. Uh, if I can inspire one entrepreneur, like I didn't know I was born to be an entrepreneur, but to then produce a company, then start more jobs and hire more people. We do, we'll like, see you in that me for her. I do think you'll see in there. What's up, huh? sir? What do you say? I think somebody's not muted. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Uh, all right, we're good. All right, go for it, man. Sorry. No, no. So that's that's why it's kind of all going to coaching. I uh, I've done a lot of different things to make money online, whether it was affiliate marketing, um, my software business. I had a previous one. I have one that I'm trying to launch now. Um, that's a whole drama in itself. Um, it's not as easy as you'd say. Um, but that's kind of more more of an investor in that project. Uh, I own a, a four unit real estate. So I have a lot of different sources of income and done a lot. And now my whole goal is, I know being an entrepreneur, I bought a bunch of courses and I struggled to take the leap. So I just want people who bought a lot of courses or wherever they're at and they just don't know, I can kind of just help them and guide them to take this action to make this money right now. Because right, right now is when we need money. You know what I mean? And, and there's not actually a shortage of money um, right now. If inflation, it will be going up. And it's going to be hyperinflation. So if I can get people to make money now and make better money decisions, they'll be better off. And that's really my passion. It's not really to make a ton of money in coaching. It's more to help other people make money, you know? Guys, can you hear me okay? Uh, somebody mentioned that my mic is making noises. I think it's when you breathe into it. Oh, Sounds like great. Tony Romo. <laughs> yeah. You know Tony Romo? He, like, he speaks and like, smacks a little bit. <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe put the mic away a little bit. Yeah, I uh, I worked out before this, so I think I'm a little bit too uh, pumped up here. Maybe maybe that's it. I don't know. But um, yeah, let me try to put this away. Usually this mic works pretty good, but all right, guys, I'll I'll do the uh, the best here. So, all right, well that's that's awesome, man. And um and I guess one thing that I want to ask you too is so right now, what's moving the needle for you and for all your endeavors and your and your you know the companies that you're doing right now? Um, yeah, what's, what's moving the needle is just content. So, uh, so someone always says, uh, I think uh, every problem is solved with more content. And it really, by doing daily YouTube videos, there's going to be one up tonight uh, with me and uh, I think Lewis House I'm going to do when I was on the live there. So he challenged me to a seven-day webinar, which I think we picked for Easter Sunday. But now knowing, uh, I don't want it to do, confirm with this time. So if this is at eight next Sunday, then I think I could do the webinar at like six, right? And then we'd be enough time for it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do six. I just learned that from here. Now I know you were in the mentorship group. What do you do, Tony? I forget, I remember your face. I do, I work for uh, a stock trading education company. So uh, we basically teach people how to, uh, how to trade stocks, whether beginner level, uh, advanced, basically kind of giving them resources, uh, courses, yeah. stuff like that to help them be consistently profitable. Um, and I do the oh, sales. So you were the one when I posted the YouTube video said, oh, this is my game. This is why I want to do it, right? I'll watch it, right? Indeed, sir. <laughs> oh, cool. Because then, dude, I felt like immediate pressure because I've dabbled with stocks. So the two things that anybody here and I'm, whether, whatever you think that's benefited me making money that I give in my coaching sessions are say these two things. Money's attracted me and I have a millionaire mind. Those are the two things I've said. And I looked in the mirror where I actually believe in. Dude, I bought S&P Petroleum years ago, put some money into it. Uh, I've actually had really luck with the stock market and I'm not even a big stock guy. Um, I bought the wrong one. This kid, Jeff Forbes, who he was a different entrepreneur. He kind of like challenged me like, oh, you got to buy an S&P, the thing. And I want to buy an S&P. And I want to max it out. And I want to just cash it out right away. Um, so I've always had, I've never had really a bad, uh, I mean, even now I pulled out money to put, to invest in the software and get it to the thing. So I pulled out a lot of money that I had in the stock market right before this whole huge crash. I mean, I put, I didn't do it to rebuy. I had no prior, I still lost money and it's just like everybody else. But it was a blessing in disguise, you know. Nice, yeah. I know with petroleum right now, it's um, it's, well, it's like, not good now. Yeah, it's. I don't really follow that too much. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, some people are, are purchasing like the ETFs. We we had a guy here actually last week, uh, Jason Simmons. He's big into like natural gas, you know, oil, um, you know, different like trading the actual futures contracts. But um, yeah, I'll have another friend who's uh, he's more of an investor guy, and yeah, unfortunately, he's deep in the red with the uh, with the oil. But you know, I mean, if you don't sell, you don't lose at the end of the day. So hopefully, it'll bounce back at at, at some point. I mean, I know Trump is talking to Putin, and uh, I think like the Sheikh from Saudi Arabia or something to that effect. So hopefully, we see a pop. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely that in real estate is a hot topic right now because people are saying people want to like buy this bottom and you know kind of like any any free cash they have kind of invest in it. The expectation is eventually it's gonna, you know, go up at some point. We just don't know when. So it's like, man. Yeah, so that's kind of what I want to do on my YouTube channel. Like I switched from doing a vlog of the dream to build the coffee shop music studio, which is my why. Like my why in my life. Um, that's how I found Grant. That's how I'm in here. My older brother Jay and me built the brought out a dream on a napkin to build a coffee shop music studio. And two days later, he went up passed away on drugs, fentanyl. And when that happened, I found the video of Grant Cardone on depression and it led me into all entrepreneurial things. And I just found making money, not easy, but like, um, but like I was just really good at like solving problems. Right. Um, and before I used to date girls with problems and it's just because I like solving theirs. So I kind of shifted no alcohol, no girls anymore. And really just uh, try and solve problems uh, for the marketplace whether it's just something with software, like I love being a real estate investor. I love having tenants when they call me about a problem that I can solve it. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of, so I think, you know, I, and I love, I'm born to be an entrepreneur. And a lot of people I coach or people don't think they're an entrepreneur. But like I didn't know that until I got a coach. Like I invested seven K in coaching and um, it really made it clarity for me. So I'm trying to take everything I took in the seven K coaching and do it with people. And I'll do them for free as well. I've noticed with free people that don't show up, or they don't pay attention. So usually the going rates by like 250, but, um, but like it doesn't, it's not really about that. And I've taken all the best questions and now I'm building a webinar for a make more money now course. So people can actually download a course that'll just help them kind of make money and get some action things to do right away. 
That's pretty cool, man. So if anybody wants to tap into the course or anything else that you're working on, whether the coaching, whatever it is, how do they contact you outside of like the, do you have like a link or like a website, something you want, you want to post in the chat there for, or for them? Yeah. I usually say jeffjcarnian.com. Thanks to um, somebody else. Uh, this guy's making my landing pages right before I was in here. Nice. One of my um, guys on my team is redoing all my pages. So that's the main site that's going to be done with all the webinar and coaching link. This one here, jefftheentrepreneur.com. And it's going to be all the YouTube stuff and the merch store. Because, uh, you know, what Mike C-Rock is. Yeah. Mike C-Rock, um, he was actually on our very first, uh, zoom call. And so his wife is making my merch store on jefftheentrepreneur.com. So she's doing that for me, which has been a heaven sent from her. And then this inspire others always, which is kind of my mission statement. Um, cause this is what I, I put on cause I'm kind of punchy like Trump or like Grant Cardone, where I'll say stuff like by a Spanish girl dating her and stuff. So I remembered, you know, have this thing, this mantra for myself. And it, and so that way, when anything comes out of my mouth is inspired, you know? Um, and that's helped me out a lot. And then, so we're writing a book, uh, thanks to Caroline Flower, who I actually kind of was punchy and kind of got mad at her. She's like, the story's so great, it'll make millions. And I, you know, because I lost my brother, it's very sensitive, so I kind of lashed out on her, but it's just all part of the journey. Uh, but inspiredthisalways.com, that's going to be where the book's going to be on. We're going to have a couple, I've written a lot of it, almost the whole thing's right in. Um, but we're still writing now as it's part of the journey. Like my goal with coaching sessions is to find one entrepreneur who becomes the next Jeff Bezos, you know, like, like that would be cool, man. Be like I coach this guy, find out the talents in him and saw it. And we have a few, there's this one guy, John Jasniak, who flips land. He's extremely talented. I'm just trying to get him more known. I'm actually trying to get him into the mentorship group as well. So. Nice. Well, yeah, there's still that, um, like if you get them on board, if you have like a, like if you sign up for the affiliate link, you get like a 50% of the transaction. So that's still, you know. Do they do that with part own credit or do they do that with cash? That's a great question. Um, I didn't think about that. It, it could be maybe just like credit. Knowing but... Grant, man, he's like, <laughs> me, you know, I love Grant. I love him too, man. Dude, I'm a little bit like Grant myself and I got, I'm, I, but I have a good heart. I think Grant doesn't have a good heart. By the way, Elena's interview, I was wearing the same shirt. I'm a minimalist. I don't have too many shirts. So people say that I threw out a lot of clothes. It helped me get better. But this is the same shirt I was wearing when I interviewed Elena. That's coming out on the Make More Money podcast this weekend. So I do a lot of different things. Um, but like it all kind of like, well, I think it was you actually saying with all this time, you think we have, um, you know, more time. And I filled up my day, like Grant says, you know, I have the podcast. Luckily, I have a lot of editors and a lot of teams going in. But I did want to leave three different things if anybody's struggling to make money that would help. Can I leave those? Yeah, please share with the group. So the, the three things that I've done to make money over the time is either, and this, we're just going to leave the three main things, and it's just a lot of subcategories. But the first one is, and actually, you know what I didn't realize you can do here? Sometimes you can do this. I don't know if you can do this there. Because I used to be a teacher before I was here. Can nice. anybody see this? Yeah. Does anybody, does anybody ever do this or no? No, you're the first one. <laughs> okay. Good. That's, that's what I was hoping. So the first one you could do, and everybody's like, I just, it's more dramatic this way, you know? And plus, you can see my bad handwriting. I used to teach, I said, the, the girl at the best thing, so you could have a product based service. It makes sense, right? But with drop shipping, still works. There's so many different ways. Amazon FBA, all these different ways are something that you focus into. I've had success drop shipping before. I actually had unsuccess because I had so much success. I was like, put all your money in advertising. And I, I made more money in advertising than I did selling the product. So uh, learned about that the hard way. But like, um, but it wasn't really for me. I'm not product. Then the, the number two one, this is what I'm doing right now. This is what anybody can do. This is kind of what I coach in here. Like you could do this as well, Tony. Um, so it's the service-based business, right? So this is kind of everything from KBB to any course that we download card on you, right? Um, Peter can do it with his real estate. Uh, Susie, everybody has the knowledge in them and you can actually provide a service by doing it that way. And I have just three action steps that um, I'm gonna put in the webinar and everything like that. Um, how you can just take this and make money now with it. As well with the product, the product you need a little bit more capital to work with, but this one you can just do. And then um, I'll give a bonus after the third. The third one, is um see this uh oh this one here this is i'm still doing this kind of right now so i'm doing this with uh, my podcast people well, actually no i'm not doing this one so freelance which everybody knows but there's a site we actually might be um 
my software company, we hired a developer from, and my, my business partner will get mad about me sharing this, but you guys can see it on the, I do a, a, a vlog of documenting the journey to me building a software company. Um, so freelancer.com is one of the sites that you can work on, Upwork and Fiverr you know of. Freelancer.com, we, we had a developer working for us. He, he threatened to hijack the, the, the software and write code. And Freelancer banned him and didn't give his money at the time. So it's this big whole thing up in there where he was going to delete our software. Luckily, I used the code, so I was able to back it up and figure it out. But it was a whole thing. So Freelancer, um, there's a whole big, they're, they're going to give us a ton of money or it might be a lawsuit, which I don't want to sue them. But that's where it actually might come to. I was talking to one of the uh, um, turning buddies. The other thing, and this is what everybody's going to do right now, it's affiliate marketing. This is how I've made a lot of money. This is what my software does. It's affiliate marketing. And I'm a horrible speller. Just like uh, Jessica Alba. Did anybody see that? She's like a horrible speller. No? She has an thing. So affiliate marketing. That's the 10X Growth Shop. Like I use uh, Podblade to edit my podcasts. That's where like if anybody wants to start a podcast. By the way, big money tip. If you want to get coached by anybody, um, like whether it's that. And like, so like people are like, oh, I can't afford your coaching. Or, or whatever it is, which anybody, like, I'm here to help. It's not like by that, but like start a podcast and then you can interview. Like I interviewed Grant, uh, Elena Cardone. She charges 50K for coaching. I was only supposed to have a uh, half an hour with her. And I wound up having a whole hour because the, the interview was just so good. It was inspiring the world with Elena Cardone on everything. I can't wait till it comes up. I'm trying to get it, the editors to go quicker. But those are the three ways you can. And you have any questions about it, you can DM me. I'm Jeff the Entrepreneur. I also have my link tree in there finally. And I'm getting more into um, all that. But yeah, that's, that's, I, I wanted to test this out because that's what I'll do in my coaching sessions. I'll kind of get a whiteboard and write all sloppy on them, you know? That's pretty cool. So actually, uh, there was somebody um, that I kind of got to touch base with, um, you know, and, and speak with basically. They were mentioning that they're actually interested in doing like a podcast. So would you be yeah. a good resource if they wanted to get some tips or kind of have like a starting point? Could they like, you know, like call you or? You know, or reach out yeah, to definitely. I'll, I'll definitely make time for that as well. I um, I actually use uh, Podblade, uh, who have been great. So all I have to do is sit and record it, and then they have a platform where I can just upload it. So this way, I can still be an entrepreneur, still focus on coaching business, but still put out value and everything. And yeah, anybody here, I say everybody open a podcast. I'll be on your podcast. Uh, right now, I took a podcast course. Do you know Omar the Rockstar is? Sounds familiar. He does the Passionate Few. He sells a $25,000 course to learn from him. I took a lot of coaching from him. And um, so he told me right now, I've just had pop name guests on, so I have that, but I'm actually gonna do, um, so it's the Make More Money Podcast, six, seven, eight figure entrepreneurs, and we're gonna put big names in, but in between, like Elena Cardone and Dana White is gonna come on, which is crazy. I, I'm waiting to do it in person. I got that at the Growth Con too, it's a crazy story. Um, but then we'd have like you on Tony in the middle. So this way, he jack up your ratings, you know what I mean? And there's another kid, um, Taj Tech, he's a Nigerian 13-year-old motivational speaker. I'm going to have him on. I don't know if anybody knows who he is, but I want to blow that kid up because he has a good heart. And I, I just love, you know, and people have good hearts out there, you know? That's awesome, man. That's, uh, yeah, that's definitely something uh, amazing that you're doing there with them. Um, and so I, I have like a little list of questions here. I know uh, Peter has some questions. The last one I have on my list, maybe afterwards we could uh, go to Pete or if you want to open it up for like a Q&A with everybody here. We got about, let me see, 23 people. So maybe some folks have some questions. But uh, so my last question from my end here is, um, so I'll, from all of Grant's content, because we're all here because of the 10X movement, I guess, like Grant, let's be honest. Um, from all of Grant's content and programs, what, what do you think has helped you the most or, or the most direct with your business and in what way? So, yeah, great question. Um, and we all are. And honestly, I wouldn't be here without Grant Cardone. Uh, I say it all the time. I know everybody has a story. Every time I want to like tell Grant like my story, there's other some drug addict who saved his life, and I'm like, well, now I just feel like just being like everybody else. But obviously, I had that. I you know went home and prayed. I didn't want to live, and um, and I'm a Jesus guy, and I prayed, God, I don't want to wake up. And I searched Grant Cardone depression. I watched that video, and they were just about to medicate me, and I watched him talk about how he didn't need to be medicated, and uh, and and Oprah did it. You can do it. And I read the 10x rule book. And he always asks, what's 10X mean to you? And, you know, I think was all sitting down on stage, we always watch, what does 10X mean to me? I'd love to share. What it meant to me, 10X means take action. That's what it means is action. Like his book, the only thing I got about it was action. So a lot of times, whatever I had in me, I just started taking action right away. And it was like the way I kind of compare it to layman's terms. When I was at a bar 
the younger, I'm 34 now, and there was a, a cute girl there. I used to take action like she was a hot girl every time to talk to her because if I lost in the chance, I would hate it. So it's that same way, man. I go after whatever I want, like it's a hot girl, and I really want to, you know, just make it happen, you know? And it used to always get my brother mad. And my brother, Josh Lewis Groves, I'm now trying to get him on podcast. I'm going to be his PR guy because he, I want to blow up. He's the one kid that doesn't do this. I just got him in the mentorship group. I told him to go into MLM and I'll sell under it because, like, that, he's a general manager at Chili's. He's cutting tomatoes. And he has all this knowledge, 10 knowledge that you guys all have in your head. We all have something we can share. And he's cutting tomatoes, you know? So I don't want him doing that. I want to see him on these things. Maybe we can actually feature him in here one time. He's definitely yeah. a lot more reserved and he's definitely a lot more, um, not as like on this no, not everybody can handle me i get that you know i met my match with somebody else recently and i'm like wow is that what i'm like so <laughs> no that's cool man yeah uh tell them to uh send me a message i mean my, my number's there in, in chat you could just text me or you know whatsapp me or you know whatever whatever makes sense but uh yeah we could definitely have them on for sure all right awesome so, okay, so we're at that point, guys. I am out of questions for now, and I want to give everybody an opportunity. So, let's see. Um, yeah, let's do some little, little, little bit of Q&A. Does anybody have any questions? You could ask your question in chat. Um, I don't see any hands raised. I don't know if it's just uh, – Peter, do you see any hands raised on, on your end there? No, I don't see it, but I have uh, the question that I want to ask Jeff. And it's going to be a, one of those uh, questions that it makes you think. So let's uh, challenge your, yourself right now uh, because we talk about this, that your brother is the other side and you're the hyper guy. So let's switch it now. Okay. So this is a challenge. Yeah, thanks. What makes you move? Okay. That's my first question. What makes you move? What is the thing that makes you every day to move? You hear me? Yeah, I'm just pausing before I think because that's what my brother does. So I'm practicing. I'm listening to you. Um, um, you know, what makes me move is one thing. And um, it is the fact that my older brother, Jay, uh, passed away. And he's six feet under the ground and I'm six feet above the ground. And I do three things every day that make me remind me of that. I either will listen to um, a motivational video uh, called It's Up To You on YouTube. It's a three minute video that me and my older brother listened to together before he passed away. And it just says, every passing moment, you have your second to uh, turn yourself around. And that line, I remember talking to my brother, trying to inspire him before he died. And I always think that no matter where I am, if I woke up late, if I didn't write down my goals, whatever it is, that video, I, there's a video on my YouTube channel. It's the first one I posted. It's with me and I did a eulogy to my brother with all his pictures. I'll watch that, man. I'll cry up. It gets me like, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then the third thing is I listened to my eulogy that I spoke out that day because it was the first time I ever did like public speaking. And I actually, um, at that time, I was speaking with a purpose to inspire everybody in there who weren't saved, who didn't know the Lord. And I really wanted to do it to uh, just really just like inspire people then like, hey, even though I lost my brother, I'm going to go for it. And so I left that eulogy, which I'll probably put on the podcast one day. But those are the three things I do anytime that, that, I get me um, going. Cool. Nice. We did have a question. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, Peter. Uh, there was a question from Christina. Um, she says, if we have questions about sales and strategies and working with wholesaler or distributors, can you help us with that as well? Or is there anyone here who can help her? So, yeah, if she has any questions about that, can, re can she reach out to you as well for that? Sorry, what was the question? I was reading somebody else's thing. Sorry. Oh, you're fine, man. Yeah, I know it's like information overload. Um, if we ha if if we if we just have questions about sales strategies and working with wholesaler or distributors, uh, can you assist? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, sales strategies. I think we're all in card on you and doing that. I'm, like when I first did my seven K coaching, the guy wanted me to build a course for uh, sales, and I was like, no, man, I have the best course on sales. I don't need another thing to do that. But um, yeah, anything with uh, wholesaling or sales in that aspect of uh, on an inventory and fulfilling your product, uh, yeah, I can definitely help with that. I've done that. I failed at that a lot. So I wouldn't be the best mentor for success, but I'll definitely point you to someone. I'm friends with a guy named Kevin David. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's a big YouTuber. Uh, and he's had extreme success in it. So, but I know all what not to do. Don't do this, you know? So, and I'm very transparent about kind of what I've had success in and what I haven't. So, um, 
But yeah, I'll definitely field the question and find the right person who can answer if I can't answer it. Okay, awesome. Uh, Peter, for now, let me see if I have any more, if I see any more questions here. Uh, let's see. I can find anything here. Okay. Um, uh, can, I, can I address what Tom said? What's that? Uh, Tom, the guy who said, yo, this guy needs to lead with. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So, yeah, Tom, um, you're going to see tonight, and he's right, it mellowed you out. So, when I do speak about my brother, um, it, I definitely get serious about it. And I usually do leave with that. But I always feel my brother, my younger brother, is like, oh, you're just pitching the story about your brother. But it's definitely my why. When I'm talking about money, I'm, I'm excited and I go a little bit higher. So I just am like, man, if I do it, you can do it. And I know that. But when I talk about my brother, I usually leave. You're going to see a video with Lewis House tonight. I don't know if anybody knows who Lewis House is. But um, it's a live video with him. You can see when I talk to my brother or in a video with Grant Cardone when I first did a live with Grant. Um, that I actually, when I talk about my brother, I kind of do slow down. So I usually do lead with that, but a lot of times I don't want to just be like, people feel sorry for me and like do the whole thing. So I kind of struggle with that. Do you have any advice about that, uh, Tony? Like how to lead with, like, I know in sales, they would say lead with your story or get to that or do, I pitch freak has been amazing with value, emotion, subtle call to action, right? All that. So I usually will do it that way. I'll do value right here. The emotion will be my brother's story, kind of why I'm doing it. And then that's kind of how I've, I've structured it. But do you have any like tips on that? Peter? Well, I will say like this, you know, like the way that uh, I see that uh, you can create the best of your story. It is like always use uh, your, uh, your why before you, before the story, but as a, you know, like I start to do this because of, and this is my 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 uh, mission that I created because of that event. Because always there's there's a few ways that there's a few ways that uh, things change in our lives. It's either a pain or either a pleasure. So um, we we have to kind of uh, uh, rely on those things that is going to change something in our lives. And uh, usually the pain is the one that we remember most. Like uh, if, if you have uh, anything that happens to you in the childhood that you, you know, you create your uh, huge discom discomfort and uh, it create you like to that level that you, you are marked, that you remember that day with, with no problem. But if it was something that was just a regular day, you will not remember those days. And those days that usually we create either that huge discomfort, like somebody that we lost, uh, mark something in our brain that we relate to it. And you can use that always as a, as a, as a switch for any story. It doesn't matter what it's about, but um, I would say like exactly like in an interview, because I used to do uh, interview for um, human resources. And in an interview, one of the, the biggest key it is like whatever is your negative side, you have always to show that you took action steps to correct it. And the way I said, you start with something that is maybe dramatical, but you always have to add it with a happy note to show that you are working on this. And yeah, that was your step, that you was your startup and make it to change. But that thing made it to be like invincible. And that, that's the reason you're still here and you're still doing good because that it was your change, that it was your starting point of do, uh, being who you are right now. That's the way I see it. Yeah, I always thought, just to kind of go on that, uh, Peter, I always thought it was just, through me, pain equals change. I guess pleasure does too, which is what you said, something you're passionate about will equal change. But I noticed pain is the great equalizer, at least for me, to change stuff. Um, I don't, I don't know about that. But. No, absolutely. Hey, agree. Yeah. So what is your mission, vision, and purpose that you create except the, what you said until now, what is your purpose of doing everything except helping people? What is your real thing that you want to achieve and yeah, how, you, build, how you coping with build. this situation? I want to build right. and I am, I'm glad I didn't build it now because I had opportunities to maybe invest in like Boca Raton, Florida or down where you're at, Peter and open up the biggest coffee shop music studio ever called KokomoJays.com, Kokomo Jays. 
Um, it's my dream. It's mine and my brother's dream. I want to have, you know, Starbucks, right? Everybody knows Starbucks. I want to have something as big as Starbucks. I talked to Howard Schultz before. I got the blueprint of it, and that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing real estate and then software and everything because it's like going to be a headstone to my success. So one day I want us all to go through where you guys, wherever you're at, to build Kokomo Jays, where it is. And it could be a Kokomo Peters and a Kokomo Tonys and like literally have a, a thing where I go to coffee for energy. I know people are going to say I don't need energy. I do just like anybody else. I have different things I do to help me with more energy, but but I do think um, I, I want to see it as a franchise. Or not, people always get mad about franchise. I want a franchise. I want to publicly trade it. I want to be on the stock market. And I, I still think you can make a franchise work in a good way where you're not squeezing the dollar. And I kind of want to prove that wrong because I see that. So that, that's, that's the why. That's a physical thing. I see it every day. Anytime I pass Starbucks, I see Kokomo J's. I'm going to buy it out one day. And I will. Catch, catch, catchy name. I like, I like the name for sure. I think that'll catch on. Yeah. Um, there is also another couple couple questions here in chat that I'm getting for you. Um, uh, Reynaldo asks, what about selling prints and having an e-commerce store? Somebody is starting from zero. Uh, would you be able to assist with something like that? Yeah, so what I'll do with, with, with my um, team, like if you go to, I think it's uh, genrockdesigns.com. That's her. She's actually, uh, I, I've done it before. I did print on demand. It took me a real long time. I'm not really the most creative person. This is why I think everybody knows this. Focus on your strengths and higher your weaknesses. Um, she does the, actually, I don't even think I have it here. Yeah, I do. She has the Waymo. She designed these hats. And the first time I put it out in one of my videos, this is nice. She did this on Printful, on Shopify, which I tried to do and I couldn't get it like this. She is talented and gifted right now because she took her time and hosts the website. Anything that I make with Inspire as always, or my brand or my logo, any of those things, I don't make any money. She does. She hosts the website and she took my design that I, I trademarked or whatever, and she's putting it down there. I can always upcharge it, but it's really just advertising. So like, that's what I did for it, but she would probably be a good point of contact to assist for that moment right there. Um, once you get in like the sales and marketing of it and doing Facebook ads, then I'm, I'm better to help in that avenue. You know, that's how I was able to make money. That's awesome. Yeah, she's, um, I forgot how I got through, I think it was on C-Rock's website, and then he has like a store, and then it's like the Waymo stuff, and then she has like another, yeah. like different other companies in there. Yeah, she that, loves that's doing it. Her. She's really good at doing it. So like, yeah, as soon yeah. as I find out, she, and I was supposed to go with Abby Brand, your merch, and I still might switch over eventually if I want to monetize on it. But right now, it's not about me making money. It's about helping other people make running money. So like the real estate, gen, even though Mike C-Rock did good, her real estate's not doing good. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get sales for you. So anything you buy will help Jen's, uh, Mike C-Rock's uh, wife, which is cool, you know? Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, we have a question from Johannes. Um, he asks, what's your daily routine or daily habits you perform daily on top of your, uh, on top of the three you just mentioned, or you, you may have mentioned a little while ago. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, that's actually a great question. Um, we actually, um, I'm doing a video. I did it the other day in here because my futon's right here. So I went minimalist. I sold my bed futon. So I bring no girls back and sleep on the comfy bed. I have it all planned out. Right. But, um, but I, I'm doing a daily routine in the morning of what I do. And really, it's, it's kind of um, Brian Cran shared it with me. It's a perfect schedule. I have it on the background. It's my phone. Um, you beat the sun up. I can't go to the gym now, but I do a little workout in. Uh, I actually do meditate. I do a breathing exercise that helps me out. Not everybody. I know people get buggy about it. I only do it for a little bit. helps me like center and focus. And then I write down my goals. Um, but those are the things that if I don't like late night, I've been out to the lights. I've been up later. Um, because of this virus, I don't really sleep. I need about five to six hours of sleep. I've been sleeping more just because you want to build your immune system against the virus. And I wasn't doing that right at first. I've been trying to go to bed early, but there's been so many late night coaching calls and like these that it gets me like wired up at night, you know? So I'm actually going to switch my schedule pretty soon. Yeah, I've had to switch my schedule as well because of the work from home stuff. So I'm actually working out like in the morning. Um, it's nice. It kind of, you know, sets the, the pace for the day. I'm definitely like wide awake, uh, at that point. So it's, you attack the day, like better kind of getting that workout in the meditating. That's a good idea. Though. Workout at the morning. What do you have a gym or what do you do? Yeah. It's just kind of like military style, I guess you could say. So a lot of push ups, um, crunches, yeah, right. burpees. I have a stationary bike. Uh, I do that, uh, jumping jacks and just kind of like mix up, I have a couple of dumbbells. And I'll try to like work off of that some bands and just kind of like make some stuff up as I go. But so uh, what I'm doing, 
Sorry, I mean pay off. No, no. No, but what, what, what I want to do, what I'm going to do is, um, and I just got this idea today. Um, like my, one of my, my four most influential people, and one of them is Conor McGregor. So I don't drink, right? I really don't drink. But uh, I'm going to go out and buy his proper 12 thing, and I'm going to do the 12 push-up challenge. I've been doing push-ups every day because I talked to Dana White, and I asked him, like, could I get I, I, Connor on there, right? And when I talked to Dana, he's like, I don't know, Connor's his own thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I know if I get attention, once I have Dana on, then I can get Connor on. And I actually really would love Connor to be next uh, guest at the 10X Growth Gun. Because I wanted to speak into Floyd Mayweather and all those guys. Uh, and they were all cool. Um, but Dana White's definitely uh, one of the guys that made me quit my job after after I watched a YouTube video. So I kind of have a big like to owe Dana a lot, you know. Dude, that's amazing. When are you gonna have Dana on your uh, on, on your on your podcast? So yeah, so it's supposed to be right after the Tony Khabib fight, but with this whole Corona thing. And so they asked if I wanted to do it via Zoom, and I told them no. It's Dana White. I want to go in person. And they're like, awesome. You you tour the studio. They're like, yep. He remembers your Andrea's her name. Great girl. Um, she's like, yep, Dana told, Dana told me about you. We'll make it happen. So I was like, how much? She's like, nothing. Dana's like that. I was like, oh, because I thought I was going to have to like pay and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. so then I, I was like, not paying. I'll pay for a plane ticket and go out to Vegas. So that was the plan. We had like three dates that I was going to try and do. And I actually booked a hotel out there. Um, and then all of a sudden this Corona thing happened. So it all went down. So I actually called the day of and they asked Zoom. And I said, no, when it all goes down, then I'll do it. Um, plus, uh, my podcast, Mike Searock's helping me get up in the ratings right now, isn't the rated the most, the Make More Money podcast. So anybody listening, if you go on iTunes and review it five stars, it helps it rank up. Because when I have Dana White, I want it to be at least a little bit more. So I was like, oh, that gives me some time to just juice it up. And I put like 500 in promotions uh, just this past week because I'm having Elena on. And, uh, so that, and that's a great interview. Like everybody, she talks about today and inspiring the world in these times, which is great, you know. Nice, man. Yeah, I can't wait for that as well. Um, so I'm just trying to get through everybody here, guys. Uh, and let me see. I think here. Eden has a question that she was trying to talk earlier. Yeah. Eden? Unmute yourself. Sorry. I will. Oh, can you hear me now? Hey, there you are. Hi. Yeah. Hey, Tony. What's up? You doing? Hey, Jeff. Do you ever feel down? Like, do you really ever feel down? Because this dude is always fired up. Like, what do you do and when you feel down what is the one thing that you do to you know yeah so great question so uh grant always says write down your goals when you feel down what i did and i'll tell you this i don't know if anybody was at the 10x boot camp but I, I i called myself an entrepreneur businessman i was able to make money i knew nothing about building a business there's a video you can go search after this if you feel lost uh on my channel jeff jake on him you'll see me in miami uh, Faith Tanati and Joe Tanati, who are my multimillionaire mentors that I work for here uh, at the window company, that was where I raised a lot of capital. Um, they told me, take an extra day in Miami. I took an extra day. I'm sitting in beautiful Miami with five shoes where Peter's at. And I was the most shell of a man depressed. So when, anytime I'm down, I do a video about it. I, you'll see a few videos I do live from my phone. That means I'm feeling really bad. And I put it out because the best way to get over that is go find someone to help. And look, look at your situation where you're at, or wherever you're at, right? There's somebody else that's worse that could use help that you could help. Any one of us can, especially we're all 10X people. We have something better in our minds, you know? So that's what I did. So if there was nobody else around help, and some people don't want help, right? I was at a Target and one of them on Christmas. Then I do a video because I know that'll help someone. And then I see the thing of that helps someone. So as much as I'm down, um, I put out why I'm down and then I put what I'm grateful for, but I do, I put it out there or I'll do that. So definitely go find someone to help someone or I put out content about how I'm feeling because I believe people care and I, I've seen it more and more than since then, you know? And that's really brave, yeah. man, to put yourself out there mm -hmm. like that. Like when you're not feeling, you know, hundred, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Because people buy that more. People buy any one of us, whether it's you, Tony, whether it's you, Peter, if you guys share your story, no matter what it is, I'm having a bad day. If you believe people care, this is the one thing I do on the coaching session. It really helps. You know, like if you're doing something, like um, I actually did one with a lady that I bought for my car. I didn't need car insurance, but she shared me her day and she was a great closer. I, I YouTube, it might be on my YouTube channel. Like she had every rebuttal. I appreciate a really good sales lady. Her name is Brittany. I think I'm going to cancel because I don't need it. But I bought it that day. But like, but it really helps to share what you're going through. Like not all the time, but like just share it in a way like, um, like just kind of you know you just be honest man people people buy honesty you know so 
And try it next time. Any one of you try it, whatever you're trying to do. Just tell them like, oh, no, I, I, I'm really bad at sale. I haven't had five sales in a row. People care. They'll try and buy. They, at least maybe that's me. Some people will be mean. But if they're mean, we all know they're just hurt inside. So it really shouldn't offend you, you know, when you have that kind of mindset. Awesome. Sorry, I know I get too excited. I got to slow down. That was great, man. That's that's good, good stuff. Uh, Crazy Jerry has a question, I think. Uh, do you want to say it all out, or would you like us to read it for you, sir? Yeah, let's hear Crazy yeah. Jerry's thing. He'll drop the F bomb. That's how I remember Crazy Jerry. Talking about being authentic, the tax group, he dropped the F bomb, and I'm like, who's this guy? And now here he is. You remember that? Let right? me ask you a question, Jess. Do you oh, have God. a sales team? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I appreciate that question because it means you care about me. I never get offended by anybody selling. I want everything to be a pitch fest. I want everybody to sell to me because if you're not selling, it, it means you don't provide enough value. Grant said it on the webinar. You guys, if you're giving away stuff for free, you should start being monetized. Like I got a lot of guff for doing coaching sessions right away. I went from selling windows to then just selling coaching sessions right from that by charging, right? And I just started monetizing right away because what I put out was value because I believed that I was putting out value, you know? So I know you're being funny, but I, I don't mind that, you know? Just no, get all that. Do the it's, it's not about that. It was a serious question for a change. <laughs> yeah, so I do, I, do have, I, I do have a sales team at, um, at the window company. We built up a team right before this happened. Um, that's kind of, that was my 1099 job, which by the way, I'm doing a video, I don't know if anybody else knows, on the 10K, uh, SBA loan that I applied for. Hopefully I get it. Cause if so, I will then be taking, cause how that loan works. Cause I study money all the time. Like it's my job. Cause it is, if you're an entrepreneur, how that loan works, you get the 10 K disaster loan. You can then put 75% towards payroll and you don't have to pay it back. So that's what I, I, I want. That, I, that would be a gift right now. I could hire people for my software, put them on payroll, put in jobs in the economy, pay people $20 an hour, or whatever the going rate that will be for that job. Um, so that's what I want to do. And then eventually have, you know, maybe some of those people put them into sales as well, you know. Can you break out a little bit more about that payroll uh, in case somebody else wants to do the same thing? Yeah, so everybody right now actually, so this is the part where like, so it's going to be capped out. The way they did the $2 trillion debt, and I really shouldn't do this. They're, they're, you have a little application, you go to sba.gov, you go click on whichever one they have payroll for payment protection. They have four different ones that are about for small business association. Okay. It's the government. We pay tax dollars. You should take advantage of the tax dollars you pay because you're giving money. That's going to make, if anybody doesn't understand inflation, which I know Tony does and everything like that, but because they printed all this money, stuff's going to be worth less. So you're better off trying to get as much money as you can. And because we're all smart 10 X mind. And if you're not, if you feel like you don't know what to do with it, then just come talk to me. I mean, obviously, I'm always supposed to say talk to your CPA or financial advisor. You know, I know a lot of them mess people up, man. So, like, talk to them and then run it by me, too, man, what they're telling you. You know what I'm saying? Because, I'm like, I'm not the worst, you know? So, but, but yeah, so then just take the loan out, and then uh, you can hire people um, on a payroll, and you don't have to pay back your loan. And the loan right now is at, like, 1% or 2%, which right now I have good debt, good debt on credit card debts for, like, courses that I bought back then. I would just take that loan and pay that off. You can't do it that way. You got to do it towards your business, which is it's actually a great rule by the government to stimulate this economy that we're going down. So I know people are, are doing a lot of stuff bad about the government right now. Screw that, man. This government's a good government. They're doing everything they can to help protect us. So like, you got to be positive about it, you know? Sure, definitely. Sure. Uh, anybody has any other questions? Let's see here. Payroll to Jason and rent. Eden. Eden. Put on my way. Payroll to this at all. Who else needs a haircut with this whole whole thing, huh? Man, I need yeah. a haircut bad. <laughs> you have to buy your own machine. You make some classes and you show how you're going to uh, do a haircut yeah, yourself and you're going to sell it. Man, someone else in here has a skill for haircutting. Put a video on how to cut your hair for like $5. I'll buy it. You know, there's a way to make money right there. That's something that I'm too scared to do. <laughs> hey, hey, Jeff, I, talk I here. Uh, who was trying to talk? To talk again. Tom. Hi. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Jeff, quick question. Um, 
what works for you better? Is it Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook with, with your marketing? What are you more into? So it all depends on the product. I mean, I hate that answer, but it does true. So whatever you're trying to do, there's certain uh, de demographics on each one. Uh, for coaching and helping people make money, um, which is what I'm doing now, works on all the platforms. On Facebook, I'm on Facebook Live right now. Guys, you need me to make money? Uh, hit me up. I'll help you out, right? So, like, that's going to work. You know what? It does. Any content's better than no content. Um, you got to, like, what, what are you trying to do? Oh, I'm, I'm just uh, – I actually – I'm in property, so I, I, I get people – Tom, you have to speak a little bit louder. We yeah, barely hear you. Can you? Where are you from, Tom? We don't hear you. Yeah, no. He he had a question in here before, which I think uh -huh. was about real estate. I think he does real estate in here. Try to do a little bit of real estate. I want to. I don't know where it was. Tom, can you try from. again to talk? To oh, see? Tom was the one who said, "Yo, this guy needs to lead with that." Can someone? To I know, Tom. I'm too fast for you. That was you, right? I'll fix my mic. I appreciate you, brother. Okay, so we're gonna have a question for him. Hopefully, you're gonna put it in the chat, so we're gonna yeah, answer it. Type it down. There was someone else yeah. Tanya, who said, "Jeff, what type of real estate do you invest in? Residential, commercial? Has Grant Cardone helped you with your business? Have you transitioned your business to remote?" Um, so, in short answer, uh, what type of real estate you invest in? Commercial. Um, I mean, it's a four unit, so that, and anything I'm going to do, the next unit's 37 unit, right, where my friend Peter lives. Um, has Grant Cardone helped you with your business? Yeah, Grant Cardone's the reason why I'm where I'm at with money. There's no, I, I have his back no matter what. Like, anything I say, like, you're just buying a cheap inversion of Grant Cardone's thing. And I've done other stuff. My coach, Clark Keegley, you can look him on YouTube. He's very famous. Um, he, did, he likes Jordan Bell for better than Grant. When I knew that. I wanted to refund, man. But what are you going to do? Um, He's still, I still learned from him. He got some very good, valuable thing. And then have you transitioned your business to be remote? Yeah, I actually sold Windows. Um, I still do this from this iPad right here through email because of past customers. And I have a very short schedule where I'll hit my power base of customers in the morning. Um, and one of them led to a four grand sale, but it's definitely gone down. Wait, uh, uh, I'm going to try to mute Tom because... He keeps getting muted for some reason. I don't know what's up with Zoom. Zoom's acting funny. Let me try this again. That's odd. I can't. Uh, there can we you, go. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. You're good. Awesome. Cool. All right. Um, look, well, I'm in property. So I, I buy and sell property. I'm a property investor. And I'm building out a, um, an online infopreneur sort of platform where I'll be looking to help people who want to get started, buy their first property, uh, buy their first income property in 90 days or less. So um, I'm based in New Zealand and look, the principles are the same. It doesn't matter where you do them, it's, it's all the same kind of thing. So Jeff, my question was actually just regarding, um, for me, Facebook is working really well and, um, and Instagram is probably where I'm lagging a little bit. So. And then when I look at running ads on Instagram or trying to build that out, it doesn't seem to work for me as well. Yeah, no, Facebook, you, you, already, you already know. Facebook's your best bet for that. Client, your clientele, where the market it's at. Plus, a big thing that you can do with Facebook, too, if, if you, especially when you come out of the course, I would join some, like, real estate investor groups or wherever you are, and I would do live videos. If you're just talking about something, people are nine out of ten times to click on a live video than they are um, just do like a, a pre-proportioned um, one, like re redone and doing all this work in it. Live videos work really well. People click on them because it's live. But you got to hatch, you got to still have the same kind of hook to catch them and just talk about it. I know they all have rules about not oversharing. Just give value in your video. And then what I would do is you engage con conversation. This is a way to get by all those rules. When I know solicitating, which there's, for me, an entrepreneur, there's always a way to bend the rules. So then you do a live video giving value, people ask you questions. And then one thing you always want to have right now is a YouTube channel. It's been a gift to me. That's led to a lot of coaching sessions. I would tell anybody right now, start a YouTube channel. I'm actually doing a video soon. Everybody keeps asking me three things you want to know when starting a YouTube channel. I'm going to put that on there because that's benefited me a lot. I'm at 1K subs now. So now I get paid from YouTube a little bit. I mean, it's like 12 cents an hour when you watch a video. It's not like a lot. But it's like, I can say, oh, man, I got paid. I got to fill out tax thing, you know? So it's cool. It's good. It's taken three years, man. It's not easy. I did it just by doing it this way, by having people subscribe and trying to give value. And, I, you know, I've niched down thumbnails and, and taglines, by the way. Do you know that? 
are the one things you want to do. I suck at both things. So if anybody's good at that, let me know because I could use somebody. I had a kid I hired once and uh, the corona thing shut him down. But anyway. Um, What's a tagline? Hang on. What's a tagline? What is that? Oh, the tagline is just basically like, um, don't do these things when you, uh, the six, the three things to do when you, not to do when you, uh, when you uh, invest in property, right? Because cool. it makes people, the way we're all wired as humans, we want to look at the car, a car wreck, right? If you do the top three things to do, that'll work good for people looking for it, but when not to do, people, people who are not interested will look at, ooh, what don't I do, you know? So that's like, just like little tricks on how to do it with YouTube. And I don't even do it the best way. I, I spent 7K in a YouTube coach, learned all this stuff and still did it my own way. I would say now I'm starting to think, but, um, but yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. Like I put, I think last night I put was unemployed, do these three things. I should have styled that one a little bit differently, you know? I think awesome. on uh, this Thank one, uh, yeah, I think on this yeah. one, uh, yeah, it, it can there, help uh, you. I, I'm interested in property. I love real estate. Yeah. I think on this one, Enrique can help you. Enrique is uh, with the uh, marketing, isn't so, Enrique? Oh, yeah. No, I just, I just did a little uh, coaching with Enrique. I told him, yeah, I have Enrique on the phone. He knows. I gave him some pretty good value um, yeah. for free because uh, he showed me he was looking for salesmen. And I got on the phone so, with him and I said, well, I'm yeah. looking to buy your services. Try and sell me on them. And he was too cheap. Yeah, yeah my, 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 my prices were a little too low. Hi, everybody. I'm Enrique. Uh, Jeff gave me the beautiful reminder of, hey, man, your prices are way too low. You're, you're lowballing yourself. You're, you're selling yourself for too cheap. And uh, it was a good epiphany moment. It was a good kick in the ass, you know. So, so thank you for that, brother. I really appreciate that. Yeah, because you, you offer what – the way your site is, you put so much work in your site, and marketing is huge. If you, and marketing is a very tough job to do. And I used to have, when I was all in focus – I had Take Two Media, which was, um, we're gonna make you look twice and make you so good on. I had an SMMA. I was just like everybody else, right? Yeah, super time to sign deals, But I had to fail forward. I started off just like you before I started making money. And then that's what got me in the software business because I was like, okay, instead of doing this, let me actually solve problems with software. And that way I'll help every guy struggling so it'll make it faster for them. And I'm still in the pursuit to build that software, but I will. It's gonna be a legit, it's gonna be my best software ever. Yeah, man. I'm actually uh, real quick. I just want to say uh, I'm actually working on an offer right now. I want to run it by you after this. Um, after we hop off this call, because I know we're, we're you can run it by me right now if you want. If everybody's okay with that, it's up to them. I know we're running close to nine o'clock. I don't know if they got oh, yeah. anything planned. Yeah, we we always go a little over, man. Go for it. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me let me screen share with you guys real quick. Let me pull it up. By the way, I went actually because um, I wanted to see if you took action and changed your prices. I went back and looked at your site today. It was actually still up in my web, so it's not like I'm doing that. But I went and I watched your whole video through. I will say I love that you did video content, how you did it. Um, and, you know, you kind of did slam competitors, which I'll say don't do. You're like, my competitors do this. We're not going to do this. I'm going to do this way. But I did like the personality video. That was that was a good touch on your. Uh, yeah, I'm really I'm really big with video marketing. Like that's yeah, dude, it's uh, huge. That's I do, the best I do a lot of that, especially with my social media postings. Um, I try to post a lot. I try to post anywhere from like at least six times a day. But uh, yeah, most of my stuff for content creation is is really over video. I just like because I'm really good in front of a camera. I, I'm a people's person. I could talk. And, and guys, uh, excuse me. I have like. 100,000 tabs open on my computer. You know, I got that like speedy entrepreneur mind when I'm doing 100 things at once. So I'm trying to find this as I speak. But like I said, uh, I'm really good in front of a video. You know, I, I do videography as well. Um, obviously, it got but slow with this whole pandemic and everything. Because this, this was an epiphany to me and it helped me actually close up. What's the one best thing you think you do well as the owner of the marketing business? Is it video? Um, I would say, honestly, talking to people, I'm, I'm, I'm so good sales. at sales, I'm, I'm good sales at creating, partner. yeah, I'm super good at networking. I network all the time, whether it's through Grant or Dean Graziosi seminars or Billy Jean seminars, like I, I, I network, I go all across the country, I fly, uh, I love networking. Hey. Sorry, guys. You're welcome, Tanya, for answering your question. Um, yeah, no, networking is great. 
um, I think what's better than even networking sometimes, because sometimes a lot of people I see in a lot of coaching sessions, they network like crazy, they meet a whole bunch of people, but they don't focus on kind of what will help them a lot of times and what will help other people. So if you're not helping yourself, you're not going to help anybody else grow. So a lot of times, too, I mean, for you, it's good to network because you have all clients. You can always help them in marketing. So I, I understand that. But I just did want to say that, like, it's actually good to kind of just get to a, a nice little power base of people. That's why I like these little small groups a little better because you can find someone you need yeah. and kind of bump stuff off of and then go, you know? Then, right. like, a million Zoom calls. Nothing against the mentor call. It's amazing. And it is, but you don't get all this. That's why – that's one thing that's been the most beneficial to the mentor is all these breakout groups. This – you know, whether it is Ken Gosselin who's going up against time. I, I went to Ken. I was like, what are you doing against these guys, man? I, I gave him my word. So I told you I'd do that. And Ken's like, and I, dude, I'm going to be all positive and inspired as always. He said that next Sunday will be his last one at eight. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so just so you know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's funny how you brought up, um, uh, what'd you say? Oh, man, I just forgot it, of course. I can't think of it right now, but I got this slide pulled up. Let me screen share with you guys real quick. I want to be conscious of everybody's time. Uh, so this is an offer that I'm running right now. It's an business blueprint, and I'm, I'm doing it for free. So basically, um, I've been hiring a lot of cold callers lately, and right now I'm working on my upsells. You can see it's not finished yet. This is just a template. But uh, um, I'm working on my upsells, and this is something for the offer. I'm still trying to figure out, I still want to add to the tier, because Russell Brunson says, hey, you can never really have enough upsells, but I don't want to really cap out uh, with just an offer. You know what I mean? So basically, to educate you guys on the online business blueprint is with cold calls or an online ad, which I'm, which I'm always running, uh, the purpose of the blueprint is to reach out to the businesses who are either struggling with their online presence or it's not going as fast as they want to, or the brick and mortar stores who maybe don't have an online presence, or they're really in survival mode and they're really contracting right now um, out of everything going on. So basically it's a consultation call where I hop on and uh, my cold callers and the ads, it leads them to a, a landing page where obviously it informs them more, they would punch in their contact info and some simple questions about them and their business and the biggest problems they're facing just so uh, I can get some more context and my cold calls can get context before they hop on the call with them. And if it's a cold call, you know, they mentioned in the pitch and then they could, you know, hop on a live or they could show them the blueprint while they're on the cold call. So right now I'm working on the services. And I know for a fact that uh, the, the business blueprint that we're giving for free, it's, it's the pure foundation, like the pure skeleton. And we hop on a call with them. We kind of tell them, hey, this is, uh, this is what we think you should do. That's best for you. And we, we kind of like sort them out in a row. You know what I mean? So I'll show you this real quick. So basically, we identify the largest problem that they're facing. We evaluate the weak points, you know, try to stop the bleeding and, and start the healing. And then we, we show them the opportunities. And really the opportunities, I think, would be social media marketing, landing pages, sales funnels, and email marketing simply because everybody's at home and I think that's the best way to reach out to people. So right now I'm trying to work on this. So Jeff, this is where you come in. Did you, because I know the last time you were $500 at the point, did you bump yourself up to all these? Is that, that where you're going at now? Yeah, this is what I'm experimenting. This is what I wanted to run by you. I was going to shoot you a message earlier today too, because I wanted to hop on another call. So with although you. I said 500 was too cheap, we did just come out of recession. That's dude, if you close one of those, man. I'll be like, man, just because it depends on what you're, what, what you're doing and offering. Like, so a lot of yeah. times in marketing, you've got to reinverse, re reinvent what it is. Depends what type of client you're going for. Like, what's your dream client? Because you can, you can get that, but it depends what client you're trying. If you're trying to close Tony Robbins on a coaching thing, you can, you can get that, that for that. Because what he gets for his coaching is that, you know? If you're trying to uh, close a restaurant, you're never getting that, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm, I'm fully aware of that, too. That's why I'm really fooling around with, uh, with these prices and, and really just going to look on it. So my, my, yeah, my dream I, client I, is, is somebody that makes ideally um, at least 80K a year. And obviously at that point, they're going to be investing in marketing as well. Now, obviously, I work with businesses that make much less than that. And I'm more flexible. Well, what's your dream business? What's your business is making 80K a year? I work with all sorts of niches. So honestly, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, so what I would do, actually, and this is the problem I had when I first started, is I would just niche down, get really clear on what business you really want, who you're at. Like, if you really want to do this, say you want Tony Robbins, you want Russell Brunson, you want to sell them on your marketing, which is a really tough sell, but I don't think, if, there's always room at top to the very best, all right? So if you're able to do that, go for it. But I would really get clear on that because if you're just trying to get every business, you're going to feel very scatterbrained at the end and you're not going to, you're going to wind up losing clients. I know because I did it. Okay. I'm not trying to say anything. And I remember listening to someone say it to me and being like, no, I'm going to prove them wrong and still do it. And I did, I held them out a little bit, but I did a disservice to the clients. So I would say, um, like pick, pick, some, pick, go home. After you do this, go write out your ideal client of it is this. And really, ideally, if you're selling businesses, if a business is making 80K a year for a business and they're anything, they're going out of business, man. <laughs> like right now, like you want to get guys that are doing like, you know, 2.6, like good roofing companies. Um, who else? I'm trying to high ticket sales companies are the ones you kind of want. Mortgage brokers, real estate guys. Those are the ones you really want to start with. And then once you land those deals, the same sell, a higher sell or lower sell, the same sell, then you can then bear off and go in. But I would do something like that so you're trading your time uh, for good money, but it's not as tough as it is um, for that too, you know? And if you are gonna sell these, what you gotta do too, because you can do, I've done high ticket sales. I've done like really big sales for like, like uh, companies that are like high low business companies and everything. They have examples of what people are paying for at this price, kind of. So that's because the, um, it is, you know, but I love closing sales, so. Does that, does that help? Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Like you said, niche down and really try to focus. Uh, when I prospect, I really focus niche to niche. So I'll go, I'll go in like a 10 mile radius of, okay, let's say restaurants and then I move on to dentists and then I move on to whatever. You know, I go niche I would to niche. I'll stay away from restaurants, to... especially right now, unless you're yeah. doing takeout stuff because they don't have a lot of money right now. They're, they're, that's the biggest thing that everybody cut. Cardone himself cut the advertising department because everybody cut advertising <laughs> right away. It's the simplest thing to cut because everybody's contracting. I know uh, the video company cut their advertising. Well, Twenty five hundred a month is about average of where where it was at. Right now, you're stealing it at like twelve. And then you said if you if you really can get, make money with five hundred, which is what you had, then know that that that's your base where you can even steal a company away that wants to save money right now. Like that's your biggest strength right now. You're not the strongest, biggest known company, but you're the one that can save them money and maybe they'll take a flyer on you. And then you got to over deliver like crazy, you know, like Matthew Cannon's the guy I write leads for. He's a, a monster, right? You got to, you can steal clients away from him and then over deliver, you know? Also, one thing people always look for in there, and it depends if people really know marketing is SEO. You kind of want to hire an SEO guy too. Because then if you're running ads or pay-per-click, um, SEO is something that you could be wasting people's money if it's not all corrected. You know, yeah, just, I do SEO too, but it's one of those things that I think I would just much rather um, outsource, you know? Yeah, no, no, well, well, just, just make sure you have that, like, any sort of question. Because I know I got asked that question. I didn't care about SEO for a while when I started mine. These are just things that I overlooked and got me into trouble. And that's why I literally gave up the SMM Take Two Media. Uh, I said in the videos, Grant, it made me, I just started doing video. So I was doing video. So I just started mm -hmm. doing video editing company. I don't even miss mm -hmm. my social media marketing company. Um, yeah. But I, because it was short lived, because I actually did make some money in it, but I made money once I focused and niche down, you know, and it was real estate agents. That's what I did well. So. Well, just uh, as an idea, you know, Enrique, I will never try to, you know, like I will always make three, three sides of packages. If you really want to just to kind of wrap up the idea, it is with six thousand dollars you're not gonna get like small business until you're not gonna make yourself a solid base you will not be able to get like uh you have to first have a track record, track record to prove it so i will start with something low maybe not 500 but a little more and i will have like three packages so you're gonna have different cells and uh, i will definitely uh consider this that most of the companies that the, their advertising budget it goes between five percent to ten percent most yeah. of the companies that's what they have as a as a budget for advertising mm. from their sales yeah a few years too. i got i got i got experience i, I have testimonials i have clients um as for as for uh, prices i'm really experimenting you know because because uh, what jeff said as eye openers hey man you really gotta lower your prices you, you're really uh selling mm. yourself short here i'm like oh man thank you for that so uh 
right now, what do you guys think would be a great place to really go off of? Uh, Because I was thinking maybe somewhere around maybe like $1,000 starting. Like, uh, Yeah, so what I would say, and I can let Peter do this, but I kind of said this, don't ever like do even like 500 or thing. It just sounds like you're making up prices, even when I'm in sales and windows and whatever. You want to do something. It just sounds more official, like it's more structured. It just, it sounds more like you're doing – um, twelve seventy nine or twelve even like twelve fifty like you just do a thousand five hundred and one fifteen hundred it just looks very Fisher Price just for whatever reason it does even if you do four ninety nine that it looks a little bit more legitimate um but yeah I would I would actually just so you know the going record right now at least my market research your market you got to know your market your competition what they're doing my market's twenty five hundred all right and it's dropped from them so know that you want to have a package that's up to twenty five hundred but then have one like maybe at 17 and one at 12. But then yep. here's the thing. If you want to get a client, you should always be able to, the client's a dream client for you. No, you know, you can over deliver and do really well with them. Um, this is, this is against Grant's thing, but this is what I've done before. And it's had success for me. I do whatever it is to work with the client. because You care about their money. So like, yeah, you were like, if you know, you can make business at 500 minimum or you, like you were selling it before at 500 profit, you can go down to that just to get a client and make them feel gracious for it and then go back and say, hey, we're going to do 500 first three months or 499 or whatever. Yeah. But our package, if we can over deliver, we're, we're going to be at 12, uh, 1279 or whatever, right? That's a, that's a better structured way to do it. What do you think, Peter? Yeah, I agree. You know, like the best way it is to structure and to kind of adjust with your client. I always say, you know, what would you pay for this type of service and you're going to yeah. be specific what you're going to offer and what what is going to be the price you're going to pay for that one what are you willing to pay and you take it from there they're going to tell you sometimes they're going to surprise i always like when i do negotiation for my real estate i always let them say the price first because i got a few times that they say more than i had in my mind so why should i screw it up let them it, say that's first and fire then right there Listening, shut up was the biggest thing. Sorry, and I, I should know this more than anybody, but that's part of the reason why you're so good in sales is asking the questions and saying, hey, what is this worth to you? You know, yeah, a lot of people, yeah. it'll, it'll be surprising what people will say, you know? Yeah, you know, I, really, I, I actually just wrote that down because every morning, um, that was great, me, and my, me and my cold callers, we, we do a 9 a.m. rehearsal call where we just role play, you know what I mean? And by the way, anybody listening who wants to uh, hop in on that, shoot me a message outside of here or let me know here, but, um, Every night, you know, every every morning, nine a.m., Monday to Sunday, we do that. So I'm definitely gonna use that. I like that a lot. It's smooth. I've heard it before, but you know, like it's sometimes using just so much information, and you just you just forget about shit, you know. So it's nice having that reminder from. Right, that's why it's good we do these groups. Uh, who is the Tangy Frederick City? Has a question. You have quite a few questions. I think uh, Troy was the first one. Then he's going okay. to be. Sebastian, and then it's going to be Tanji. So we have like three questions. Three, three more to go, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I, uh, Tony, do you want to oh, go yeah. over? Yeah, uh, let me uh, 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 unmute. Troy. Troy. You know? Hi, good evening. Right. Hey, what's going on, sir? Troy? Hi, I had, thanks, Jeff, man. You're dropping some gold. Um, really, really good information. And before you say anything more, Enrique, uh, we need to get on another call because there's some information that I need to share with you as it relates to pricing, especially at this time. Um, but to, to Jeff, um, what I would want to ask you in terms of what, what guidance would you provide for, for someone who's looking to be a guest on some of the high-profile um, podcasts? Yeah, so, um, yeah, just so I understood your question correctly. So you're looking to be the guest or you want to get a guest? Yeah, no, I'm looking to be a guest. Yeah, like I said, one of, one of, my, one of my things, uh, one of my objectives for this year is to get on more stages. And, and since the stages are now all virtual and online, uh, right. since so no events are going on, uh, I'm looking to, to be a guest on more of the you know, high-end podcasts. It's, it's all part of building my own international brand. So yeah, that's that's huge. Um, what what do you do really quick? Just so I know. Okay, I'm a marketing a marketing trainer and coach. Okay, yeah. So Enrique, definitely listen to this guy because he definitely will definitely teach you about stuff. Um, yeah, man. Uh, like I'll even have you probably eventually. I was telling uh, Tony in probably verge of 
reach out to me. What I would do, this is how I've gotten on it. This is what I'm doing for my brother. So my brother, Joshua Scrooge, who nobody knows about because he's not as loud as me, but he's written a book. He's done a course that helps managers sell. Um, and it is a rap sheet. I would put together a quick rap sheet and it helps if you have a following or if people you put down, it's almost like a PR uh, report. I know C-Rock pays for PR and stuff. Um, someone I just wrote something on PR. That stuff does help when you submit yourself to get on podcasts, PR and everything. The great David Meltzner and all these guys who are speakers and get paid to speak, they get turned out on stages all the time. They have someone, because it hurts for them, that pitches all the time for them. Until you get somebody, then just pitch all the time too. Um, I do that now with the way I just kind of just manage my time is I just say to people, hey, you know, while I'm trying to keep these X amount of big guests on here to level my podcast up, if you have a podcast, I'll come on it. So that's kind of how I've done it and gotten a lot of podcasts um, by, by catching value and stuff and certain things I've done. Um, but yeah, definitely just keep a, a quick crap sheet, submit it to a thing. I know a lot of like power players, I think Grant Cardone charges to get on his. I don't know if he really does because at first I was told he doesn't, but I know Ty Lopez does, Jordan Belfort does. So, but you can take advantage of this time right now when now nobody's flying into them. This is a time when you can actually then pick up the Jordan Belfort, even though I don't like the guy, I don't think we all like him here, but someone like that who's actually hurting for guests and he's done more Zoom guests and get in on them. They actually asked to be on my Make More Money podcast and this is all full disclosure. No, hey, I'm not a Jordan guy. I'm more of a Grant guy and the whole thing. I was going to have him on just to give him a hard time about Grant. And I was like, no, it doesn't, doesn't inspire as always. So I didn't do it. Um, but Omar was like, He'll, you can come on hits. And I was like, well, I'm nobody, man, you know? But so I don't even know if to do that. But that was, um, that was one of the things. So a lot, just reaching out and reaching out, doing that stuff there. Um, it does, do you have a podcast or no? No, no, I don't have a podcast. But um, from hearing you uh, this evening, uh, I was thinking in terms of starting one. But the thing is, uh, I don't have a team. So there's a lot of things I'm doing on my own and I'm outsourcing. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually calling you from the beautiful island of Barbados. Um, things are done a little differently I here. I love Barbados. Yes, yes things are... I, that's the best place on the world. I'll, I'll come, dude, we'll go do a podcast live and in session there. I'll break every travel van. <laughs> are you, yeah, are, it's you for sure. are you from Barbados? Yes, I'm Barbadian. Oh. Born, yeah, dude, living in Barbados. I was a girl in Barbados when I was here just to stay there. <laughs> be- be- do you, beautiful. Do you know the Crane Resort? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's yes, where I yes. stayed, man. That's where I think yeah. I hear you. My best friend. Yes, Dan it's a beautiful awesome place. Now. Yeah, I was, was there. I was there for. I was there for a wedding. Um, <laughs> just just earlier this year. Okay. But uh, Dude, but I really was. I, do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, an, an active one. Yeah, but I've been so doing a lot of video. Because I, I love, dude. You have your people. I'm dumb. I'm in Connecticut. It sucks here, man. People in Florida, like Peter or that, <laughs> you're around little palm trees. <laughs> you're in Miami. Go put that on YouTube channel. And do like a, I would start a podcast for a marketing podcast. Like that's something that everybody needs, you know? And that yes. way you, you, you would, what you do, the dream guests that you want to be on theirs, I, I would ask them to be on yours on marketing. And then, and then by doing that, that, that dude, that's how I found out some of the podcasts that I'm going to be on coming up soon is by starting a podcast and doing it. So I think that's a great way. I think everybody here should start one. It's it, it, if anything to save money. It's like a coaching, I think I said this before, I don't know if I said this too, it's a coaching session. You can have, you know, Elena Cardone or Dana White on you or someone that would pay Dana White 100 grand for coaching and I can ask him every MMA question in the world. You know what I mean? So, and now- Beautiful, I'm more beautiful. To be honest, so. Oh, and I know okay. if you're doing a lot, I would be missed. There's, I use Podblade. Uh, if you want, I can set you up outsourcing. You just record everything, you send it to them, they work great for you. Okay, lovely. I definitely, definitely would like to get that information. Uh, definitely be hooking up with you. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the golden nuggets. You got it. Hey, thank you. I know you know a lot. Too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Best way to guys for everybody is to DM me at Jeff the Entrepreneur. It always um, sidetracks me from what I'm currently working on. Yeah, if you could post that information again yeah. uh, in chat yeah, for the cool. uh, yeah. Uh, Peter, so we do we have any more? Uh, I'm I'm trying to keep up with the chat here, man. It's a lot of uh, you know, I love seeing the interaction. Um, do we have any more? Sebastian, questions? Sebastian, from Sebastian, yeah. we have. Can Can you ask that the, question? I don't I don't see it. There's a lot here. <laughs> let me try to find it again. Or Sebastian, you're still here. Let yes. me. Okay, here we go. Oh, hello, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm from Haiti. Oh, I know you. Yeah, <laughs> I think we we've talked to before. 
Yeah. But me, I'm from Haiti and we are living a very hard time. We have been living for a hard time with the past two years. So we're pretty much used with the lockdowns. And the real estate companies here barely work now because, no, because nobody's buying and there's no certainty about it. So my question to you was, have you ever dealt with um, an emerging country? Have you ever, ever invested in those type of countries? And what were your challenges? How did you react to it? If yeah, you so did. Great, great question. I actually looked at property. Anywhere I am, I always look at property all the time. Price it out. I looked at property in, where was I? Carousel. It was 25000 The U.S. dollar goes a lot farther there. $25,000 for a place to it, right? And I wanted to buy it because it was twenty-five grand. It was like cheap, outright cash. To buy it here would be like one hundred and seventy grand. So just so you know the difference. I don't know. What, what do you use for money there? We have the local currency, which is the good, but that's losing we, value every day now. Every yeah, well, day. so is the U.S. dollar right now. That's where we're all in the same boat. This is hurting everybody econ economically. Um, the one thing I'll say, how's the marketplace there? Is there a lot of people around in the marketplace? Is there a lot of thing or no? Well, they're not, they're not, um, they do, we do have a lot of private homes and, but not commercial, not buildings and everything that's on the market, but a lot of small houses uh, that used to be between three, 300,000 to 500,000. But now a lot of people are trying to sell them for 150 and they still cannot sell. Yeah, so that's going to happen a lot. The market everywhere is going to, I think, is this, this is a global pandemic that's affecting everybody. So what you want to do is you want to get as liquid as you can right now, and you want to wait. I don't know the market in Haiti, so I can't give you that. A lot of things, this goes for any real estate investing, and if someone can chime in if you think it's wrong, you want to buy where, it's, um, where there's jobs in the area. Because the people, who, if you're doing it for investing, that people are going to live in the property, or even commercial property, it's got to be. And Haiti is actually, I was at a U, uh, Uber driver. I'm going to put it up on my YouTube channel from <laughs> Haiti. He told me how tough it was and everything like that in there and told me how he came to America and how he started. I'm going to put that up. Um, he was a YouTube driver when I was out in Vegas. Um, but so I do know the struggle that you're in right now. Um, if you have, I would actually just pivot and try and make money online. I made a lot of money online. It's, it's tough to me. And I know that's maybe a, a weird thing to learn. But um, if you want, man, you can set up a free coaching session. Like I, people that I really want, especially in different countries, I'll coach you for free. You don't pay me anything because you're in a, a tough thing. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll send you a, a document. We'll go through what your skills are and see. So I don't kind of lead you in the wrong way. You can find what your skills to make money from it right away. Because unfortunately, it might not be real estate right now. But you can get liquid. And then you, when you have more boards, whatever the currency is, when the market goes down, which it will, it's going to go down everywhere. And then it, hopefully it'll rise back up. I don't know about there. I'll have to study it more. But then you can buy. So I make money something else and wait and then buy. So if real estate's your passion, I would still not lose your passion. Like mine's the open commercial business, right? That's my passion. But I'm, I don't really like software. I'm just good at writing code, believe it or not, you know? So that's why I went into a skill that I, I'm doing. And I'm good at sales too, you know? So. Cool. Does that so, help you uh, at all? I, I, actually, I'm in the food business, so. It's oh, you are? Yeah, it is. Okay. It helped a lot. I'm going to be able to figure it out. But I'm in the food business. I have a large catering business. And yeah. then I actually studied, uh, I, worked. I was interested in investing in real estate because of my business, uh, opening okay. different types right. of kitchen and use it as commercial ones. But it, you, it became very hard and jobs are very How, rough. How's the food business now, though? Did, it, did that die out with the virus now? There's no, nobody catering, right? Well, I do have sm some small contracts still. Uh, wow. yeah, we're working at 25, so 18% of our capaci capacity. But uh, everybody, compared, uh, compared to the US, people have um, workers at home. They have cooks at home, so they, do, they don't order <coughs> at the US. The restaurant can manage to do food the delivery or a pickup. Here in Haiti, it's different. Yeah. Um, so. I know it's going to have to work because it's food, it's food business. Everybody has to eat, right. but it's very conf confusing now. You know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, no, trust me, man. That's everywhere, man. That's why you got to kind of go out there, redefine the goals, figure out what you want to do. Um, real estate, I, I don't know enough to speak on the market there, but um, have you, do you own any real estate investment in there or no? 
uh, no, no, besides my, the building where I am right now, which I uh, rent to my, myself, different part of it as um, different, the different type of service I offer. So I'm the, my first client first. <laughs> Oh, awesome. So, Great. Thank you so um, much. Thank you, Sebastian. And uh, Peter, we have one more question, no? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to find her. Uh, it was uh, a Tangy. Tangy. Yeah, Tangy. Yeah, Tangy's here. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you, Tangy. Unmute. Hello? Did it work? I'm not sure. Uh, can yeah. you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hey, hi, Jeff. Thank you for your energy and your knowledge. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I have a question for you. How did you start? Um, I have a, a startup software development company. It's about two years old. Were you um, focusing on, on building software for companies or was it every, was the software that you were building, was it internal? And if you were doing it for companies, how did you, how did you market yourself? So yeah, uh, trust me, software is definitely, so just so everybody knows, I can be full transparent, you go to take2social.com, you see the first software I own, which was the Instagram growth, one of those cheapo softwares that annoys everybody out there, okay? Likes and comments and gets banned, all right? That's what I own. I didn't want to own that, I just wanted to do something and I want to get in business with another guy, so I bought it for that. Uh, you'll see my face on there trying to sell it. Now they have all that mass story, mass view, and if anybody has Instagram. That software, I used to, one of my business owners, the business partner I have now told me I couldn't code it to have official Facebook API. And I took that as a challenge as an entrepreneur. So I downloaded the script, the code, and I figured out how to do it and I sent it to him. He found out someone else who could do it a little faster than me, but we proved that it was possible. So then we started building something similar to HoodSuite or Buffer. That we would have had to sell the companies. I want, that's my passion for software. It's a lead generation software, they'll do it, and it's gonna be the best. I, like I, that's my passion when it comes to software to raise the funding for that um ahmad my business partner who makes a lot of money in affiliate marketing i make some he then had an idea to build a software that then would make people money if they download apps and did offers he said we can build a lot cheaper so i pivoted and we built that that's what we're in the process of building right now um there's actually a whole big uh, drama with building it and getting it to market uh, and getting the offer so people get money that's a free download. People can just make money. They just got to buy into it if we vet them right. Um, so that one's different. So I never got to the point where I had to sell the uh, customers. If so, I would have hired a sales team. That's my bread and butter. I want to do that. I want to get to that point. Um, bread earners, we need buy-in and stuff. So it's a little bit different of a model. Um, but yeah, if you are, what I would do is I would, you're the first salesman. This is for any business. You're the first salesman. You perfect the system, go through part of you, get some training, practice it on friends and family. And then once you get it down and you start closing people because it's your business and your software, then you, I would start hiring people as soon as you're good. I'd hire one person that's good. And then when they're good, you know they can train somebody else. So that's kind of how you do it. But you got you to gotta start, like any business I started, I had to go out there and sell it myself when I had a photography business or anything like that. So you got to focus on that first. Once you get that done, then go forward. And that, that'll, that'll really help anywhere. You go. What, what's your software? Well, we actually build customized software. I'm a software developer. So um, okay. <clears throat> they come to us and then we, we build software for them. So I, oh, I just. Man, I can hire you. I just fired one of my guys. So I'll hire you then. We had him part time because of everything. Uh, it's a long, you can see it on there. He threatened to <laughs> um, grab the software and, uh, and delete the code and held it for like 10 grand ransom or 2.6. Um, it's a long story. It'll be on the YouTube channel. I need to get into it now. But. Um, but yeah, it, it makes, I love, man, I love my life, man. Mod's like, what are you doing, man? I was like, I love this, man. I, it was cool. I had a come to Jesus moment with him, so it was good. He hates me, but you can't, you can't do that and work for me. He's actually still helping us out a little bit, which is just the whole, it, so, but he's not going to work with us full time. We were hoping he'd be full time, but can't do that and work with us full time. He's got to finish some stuff and start it, though. It's a true story. That's the software business. If everybody wants to get into it, I love it, but you're crazy at the same time. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. You got it. Where are you from, by the way? Tanga. I'm, I'm actually, from? I'm from California, but I live in uh, Fort Lauderdale now. Well, actually, Pembroke oh, Pines, perfect. Florida now. Oh, then you're too pricey for me. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's software makes it. I could, I could make more money probably just writing code for little software, but I just, I, I like the business aspect of it, you know? So, 
Yeah, we we can talk offline. Yeah, that would be DM. Everybody, here's the thing. Anybody in here who wants like a coaching session, because you're all TEDx mind. The reason why I started charging is because I started wasting my time and then people wouldn't show up or anything like that. And just, uh, Peter said this before. I asked someone, well, what is it worth to you? And this kid, John Jasnak, who said, hey, well, what you've offered, I, I have Ty Lopez code, you offered more knowledge then, $250. And that's how that all started. Uh, and now it's starting to webinar and working everything and, and taking all the knowledge in there. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm more about making people money than really making money. I do think, I always leave it as even a free session. Hey, if you want to do anything, do a testimony of how it was, give me feedback. And um, and uh, and you can, here's my, you know, demo. You can send me a demo. What do you, what do you think it was worth to you? So I'm kind of, 250 is like the, the threshold mark I'm at, but I don't stay hold to that. Cause I'm not, I'm about making you guys money, you know? That's where I get success. That's where I get happy. That's awesome, man. So, and, and just to, uh, you know, kind of uh, reiterate uh, the best, so the best way to reach you is, I see here, Jeff, the entrepreneur, is this through Instagram or, or what is, what is this? Yeah. Instagram's the best way just to DM me. And then you'll see the link tree. I finally set it up. I remember thinking, no, when I'm in demand, I'll set up a link tree. I don't need one. I'm not that guy yet, you know, and uh, I'm still not even that guy. And now I need one. So I have all the stuff in there. I have to sign up for the webinar in there. I have the, my YouTube channel, my make more money podcast. I love any reviews so I can start, you know, putting you guys on it, get Troy on and Tony and Peter and everybody, you know, we'll squeeze you on there, you know, I'll give that yeah. value. So at the end of the day, guys, we all know money is important. It's all about making more money so we can make a difference. And once you produce the value that you're worth, people will pay for it. I'm living proof. So if I'm living proof, anybody can do it you know and that's that's kind of what the mission is and what i do in there so that's what's up man well listen so i guess uh, it's 9 30 we'll <laughs> we're gonna yeah. go ahead and wrap I, it up I, I but... to work too. i'm posting the youtube video soon i just got it back from my editor so you guys are gonna i'll put i'll put it in the chat what's up that's what's up okay, dude so good. so a lot of uh fantastic information man i cannot thank you enough uh for joining us today uh, it was awesome, you know, uh, hearing you, getting to know more about uh, what you do and giving uh, giving us some uh, golden nuggets and some uh, valuable insight into, uh, you know, different things. So that's awesome, man. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everybody, again, for uh, joining us tonight. It's been a, a fantastic session. We will try to have this uploaded soon. That's up to Mr. Peter, wink, wink. Um, so uh, thank you again, guys. Thank you for uh, Jeff and everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys are all good. awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you. Have yes. a good night. And uh, let's uh, keep making this group valuable. Okay. Yeah, man. You did it, man. Uh,